Hello everyone, welcome back to 3 News Now. I'm Stephanie Haney. Today is Wednesday, July 29th. We've got your top headlines from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. Thank you for being here with me today. You know what today is? Today is a great day to have a great day. So. Let's do that and let's get you started off to have your great day with letting you know what's going on, what's impacting you here in Northeast Ohio. Here's the headlines that we're covering for you today. Apparently, Operation Legend is coming to Cleveland. We'll tell you what the FBI says that means. It's not exactly what the White House said it means, so we'll break that down for you. Also, Dr. Anthony Fauci is warning about a possible COVID-19 outbreak here in Ohio based on the signs that he's seeing, so we'll break that down for you. And the National Teachers Union is saying that it will support local chapters around the country if they decide to strike over going back to school, not possibly safely in the fall and throughout the rest of this year. Plus, we're going to take a look at Frontier Airlines' latest marketing slogan, the interesting play that they're making there. We'll give you some election and census reminders and let you know how you can show us something good that we might use on the air in our 5 p.m. TV show, What's New, and also online. Speaking of something good, let's get started right away by recapping yesterday. We had that delay that forced the Cleveland baseball team to play a doubleheader against the Chicago White Sox at Progressive Field yesterday. We won both games bringing our record to 4-1 and one in this shortened 60-game Major League Baseball season here in Cleveland. And as Ben Axelrod, our three new sports analyst, put it in a perfect tweet, he said, Cleveland baseball remains undefeated in games decided by normal baseball rules this season. Because the game that we did lose was in extra innings when they started off with that extra runner on second base. So, tonight... That series continues. We take on the Wake Sox tonight starting at 6, 10 p.m. And at the end of the game tonight, that'll be 10% of the shortened Major League Baseball season. So, big game. And right now we're 4-1, to one, and that is a great start. All right, now let's talk about Operation Legend. Apparently, it is coming to Cleveland after a lot of back and forth from city officials and the Cleveland Police Department. The Cleveland Department of the FBI says, yes, Operation Legend is coming to Cleveland. So, we'll sort of... Get a little bit more clarity on what that means, kind of. Justin Herdman, the U.S. Attorney for the Northern District of Ohio, says that we will have additional resources coming here to Cleveland at the federal level, and that will be directed at gang violence, narcotics-related shootings, and illegal firearms. Herdman very specifically said, nobody is talking about sending federal troops to Cleveland. He said what we will be getting are about 25 federal investigators. He called that a moderate number here in Cleveland. Herdman said this, what it is not, it is not an introduction of federal riot police. It is not an introduction of federal uniformed personnel. It is not an introduction of federal agents to protect federal property. We are bringing federal investigators into Cleveland to protect our residents and to prevent firearm violence. Now that is not quite how the White House described it last week when they said that they would be sending federal agents to Cleveland as part of Operation Legend. Operation Legend got its name from Legend Talaferro. That was a four-year-old boy who was shot and killed while sleeping in Kansas City on June 29th. Trump called this entire initiative a response to, quote, a radical movement to defund, dismantle, and dissolve our police department. Now, people have been calling for defunding of the police following the police killing of George Floyd, a black man in Minneapolis who was killed by a white officer. He was videotaped for almost nine minutes having an officer kneel on his neck while he said that he couldn't breathe. And that officer did get fired from the police department and is now been charged with second degree murder and is awaiting that trial. Trump said that a rise in violent crime in areas where he plans to send federal support as part of Operation Legend is due to a due to the radical left, but criminal justice experts actually say that that's an oversimplification and that crime is actually down this year overall. Now to further make things a little bit muddy here in Cleveland, Cleveland city officials said that they weren't aware of Operation Legend coming to Cleveland when that announcement was made by the White House last week. To make things even less clear, Cleveland police said that any federal support that was coming to Cleveland was part of an already existing plan. They said that last week. Now, this 
could have been in reference to the Relentless Pursuit Initiative. That was announced in January, and that has been described as being designed to combat violent crimes in our neighborhoods with our federal, state, and local partners, which, to be honest, sounds a lot like Operation Legend, if you're looking at the way the FBI described it today and how the Cleveland police have previously described that Relentless Pursuit Initiative. What we do know is there is already a federal presence in Portland, Oregon, and their local authorities are saying that federal agents in the area are only making things more tense on the streets. There's been reports of agents in unmarked cars taking people away without probable cause, giving a lot of people concern about constitutional issues with what's happening with this Operation Legend. Now, other cities that were mentioned for Operation Legend include Kansas City, Chicago, Albuquerque, Detroit, and Milwaukee. Bringing it back here to Ohio, Dr. Anthony Fauci, who is the nation's leading expert in infectious diseases, says that he sees early signs of a COVID-19 outbreak in Ohio. So we're going to want to pay attention to this, everyone. This is based on the percentage of positive tests that he says appear to be an indication of a worsening outbreak. He made these comments on ABC's Good Morning America on Tuesday. Now, yesterday... The Ohio Department of Health released our most recent positivity rating. That means for all the tests that are being done for COVID-19, this is the number, the percentage of tests that are coming back positive. This was based on data from June 26, so three days ago now, and that positivity rating was 5.3%. But keep this in mind. On June 26th, the number of new daily reported cases was down to 889. So assuming that the number of tests being done have stayed steady since that time, we're going to see that positivity rating go back up because in the past couple of days, we've seen our number of new daily reported cases go up quite a bit. That 889 was definitely an outlier. We haven't had a day besides July 26th when we've had a number of new daily reported cases below 1,000 since early July. It's been several weeks. And our seven-day average positivity rating is 6.2%, which the World Health Organization recommends that threshold be 5%. Dr. Fauci was also looking at our hospitalizations when he made that prediction that Ohio might be on the verge of a COVID-19 outbreak. Right now, we have 1,144 people in the hospital related to COVID-19. Those are active hospitalizations. And about a third of those people, 363 of them, are in the intensive care unit. Dr. Fauci also mentioned Indiana, Tennessee, and Kentucky when looking at possible upcoming COVID-19 outbreaks. White House health, health advisor Dr. Deborah Burks said on Sunday that we can see what's happening in the South is moving North. So let that be a warning for people to hopefully wear your mask, keep your safe physical distance, and let's prevent a COVID-19 outbreak here in Ohio. Nationwide, the union that supports teachers says that they support striking if schools reopen unsafely. Now, we know there's a lot of variation in the plans here in Northeast Ohio. Some schools are offering a hybrid model. Some schools will be online only for nine weeks. Some schools will be online only through January. Some schools are giving people the option of being completely in person or completely online for the entire year. Well, the, the teachers union, the National Teachers Union, represents 1.7 million school employees, and they issued a resolution on Tuesday saying that it will support any local chapter that decides to strike over reopening plans related to COVID-19. Union officials said that they will provide legal support, communication support, financial support, and staffing to local chapters that vote to strike. Now, the resolution does say that striking should be a last resort, but they had demands that they expect to be met in order to avoid a strike. There are some pretty significant demands as well. One includes that buildings should reopen only in areas with lower COVID-19 rates, only if schools require masks. Here's a big one. Updated ventilation systems, that's a structural change. That's a big one there. And also making changes to space students apart. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens there as we move toward the fall. And in some places when schools will be restarting as soon as the end of this week, there are some places where that happens. So we'll be keeping a very close eye on that. Now, as people are being recommended not to travel unnecessarily or not to do things that ne aren't necessarily necessary right now, Frontier Airlines is offering a big discount on flights. They are offering $11 one-way domestic flights right now. 
Now I'm usually all here for a good pun and for a bad pun, but here's what Frontier Airlines tweeted. They said, we can't mask our excitement. One million seats on sale from $11. They also said friends with masks fly free with the code fly free. Something about this pun, I'm just not loving it here. I don't know, I'm definitely on the cautious side. I haven't been doing the traveling, haven't been going out to eat, haven't been doing things in groups. Frontier Airlines is using the mask situation as an opportunity to market this deal. So here's the information. They have a million seats on sale for $11, according to their tweet. That's a one-way domestic flight that goes through the end of today. And through uh, Monday, August 3rd, you can buy a ticket for yourself if you're a member of the Discount Den and get one free. And that's for flights through October 7th. So you can check out the rest of the details on that on WKYC.com and in our WKYC app. Now here is your reminder on Wednesday, July 29th, we are 97 days out from the election. That's happening on November 3rd. So if you do have concerns about voting in person, and even if you plan to vote in person, listen up, you need to get registered to vote by October 5th in Ohio. If you have concerns about voting in person, you need to mail in an application for a vote by mail ballot. You have to apply for it first. That's a crucial step. Then you get your ballot back and you're going to want to send that in early because the voting by mail is going to be very popular this year. The Postal Service has already said they expect a lot more vote by mail ballots, so you're going to want to do that as early as possible. I tweeted out links for you to register to vote and also to apply for voting by mail. So there's a link there to register to vote in Ohio. Most people can do it online. And there's also a link to get the application in order to get a vote by mail ballot in my tweet, underscore Stephanie Haney, so check that out. Also a reminder to fill out your 2020 census form. There is about $900 billion in federal funding at stake, people, and that money gets allocated based on the population from the data from the census. So it's very important that everyone fills this out. You can do that online at 2020census.gov. Before we go here, here's a reminder that we want you to show us something good. You can send us what's great in your life. You can send us a photo or a short video. You can do that right through the WKYC app. Open up the app, tap on near me at the bottom right, and then tap on submit and send us your photo, send us your video, give us a little description about it and we'll get it. You'll see success pop up on your screen. Then we have it and we might use it online and in our 5 p.m. show on what's new. That's it for your early update for Wednesday, July 29th. I'll see you back here at 3 p.m. as soon as we get those updated numbers in from the Ohio Department of Health. I will see you very shortly. I'm Stephanie Haney.